Now let me go ahead and talk to you about the refrigerant for our air conditioning system. When manipulated the right way, like if we bring up the temperature and if we lower the temperature, we're also going to be bringing up the pressure and lowering the pressure. That allows for me to be able to absorb heat in one part of my air conditioning system and reject it in another. That's why my refrigerant is considered a heat medium transfer. Now, let me go ahead and explain to you all a little bit about, you know, the refrigerant when I started in this trade back in 2012, 2013. So the refrigerant that I was introduced to first when I started to work in this trade was R22. Now, I do not have a tank of R22 with me, but R22 had been around for quite some time. So R22, what started to happen was... It started to go through what was called a phase out state. So we were starting to move away from R22 refrigerant. Why? Because the EPA said that the refrigerant was damaging for the environment. So the EPA started working with these different companies and the different uh, manufacturers that make these refrigerants. And they started to say, hey, you know, let's go ahead and see if we could go ahead and make refrigerants that are better for the environment. So what started to happen was in 1991, this refrigerant right here was made and later introduced into the market. This right here was better for the environment. Why? Because R22 was, had a high GWP. Now, GWP stands for Global Warming Potential. In 2010, 410A became a standard for air conditioning systems, such as from residential to commercial to industrial systems. So what that means was that any new system that was being manufactured came pre-charged with 410A refrigerant. Now, as you could see, you have these different colors on these different tanks. The reason why they're color coded is to be able to distinguish or differentiate between the refrigerants that we're going to be working with. Now, R22, once again, I do not have a tank of R22, but R22 was a greenish color. And then what started to happen as we started to enter this phase out process for R22 is that the manufacturers of these different uh, refrigerants came up with, you know, this idea of why do we not, you know, bring out to market refrigerants that are better for the environment, but that still have the same pressures and the same temperatures as the R22 refrigerant. And that's why they came up with this refrigerant right here. This refrigerant is known as 407C. Now, not only do we have 407C, we also have like MO99, we also have 427A, and we also have Hot Shot or New 22. Now, these refrigerants were introduced into the market for the reason of because there were still R22 systems in people's homes or in people's businesses. Little by little, where we're still going to have to go ahead and let those systems run their course. And then in 2010, once again, this one became the standard. So this one right here in 2010, all the air conditioning systems were filled but with nothing but 410A refrigerant. So now little by little, we started seeing less and less of the R22 equipment being made. So now starting this year in 2025, we have the same thing happen. Well, back in 2018, R22 was no longer being produced, was no longer being manufactured. That is starting to happen with 410A. Now this year, what actually, what actually happened was we entered a new standard. The new standard was the new A2L refrigerants. The new A2 refrigerants is what I want to go ahead and talk to you all more on the whiteboard. What is the big hype? All right. So what is the big hype about the new A2 refrigerants? Why are they called A2 refrigerants and why they became a standard to, to the air conditioning systems, especially to the light commercial and the residential systems? Well, once again, going to the whiteboard, I'll go ahead and explain that to you more in details. So let's go ahead and go to the whiteboard and I'll explain that more. So now we're here in the whiteboard. Let me go ahead and talk to you about the A2O refrigerants. What is the big hype about them? What is it to understand? What is it to know about these new ATO refrigerants? Well, go ahead and bear with me. I hope you go ahead and understand what I'm about to explain to you all so you could have a better knowledge of these new ATO refrigerants that came to the market this year. Just remember, back in 2010, the standard that was introduced into the air conditioning systems for, you know, residential, commercial, and industrial was 410A. Now in 2025, that changed again. Now new residential and light commercial systems must use these new A2O refrigerants, which is R32 and R454B. Now I have this chart right here that I am able to go ahead and use to classify my refrigerants. 410A, the one that I showed you guys in the pink tank, 
Well, 410A is right here. 410A is considered an A1 refrigerant. I'm able to classify these refrigerants based on the flammability and the toxicity level of these refrigerants. Now, I only have two sites to go ahead and choose from, either my A site or my B site. Once again, based on the flammability or the toxicity of those refrigerants. Now, what happens with 410A is that we have it considered an A1 refrigerant because of its lower toxicity and it's no flame propagation. I'm gonna go ahead and explain what that means later on. For right now, just have an understanding that my refrigerant is considered an A1 refrigerant. Now, why it's considered an A1 refrigerant? Well, the 410A refrigerant is made up of a blend, 50-50. What are these two refrigerants that are mixed together to make 410A? Well, the two refrigerants is 50% of R32 and 50% of R125. Now, R125, when done studies, has a very high GWP. And that is what EPA is trying to get rid of. In this case, they're trying to lower the GWP of the refrigerants, make it safer for the environment. So what happened was what they did, they removed 125 from 410A. Now, 125 is considered a flame suppressant. So because it has a flame suppressant refrigerant, that means that on my flammability level, 410A is at its lowest. So that's why it's considered an A1 refrigerant. What happens was they removed 125 from the blend and they introduced another refrigerant, but with a much lower GWP. So now that's where we have the new refrigerant, you know, that we're now getting familiar with is R454B. R454B is a blend. A blend of what? Well, 70-30. R32, 70% of that. And then the other 30% is the other refrigerant they introduced with a lower GWP. That one is, all, is known as R1234YF. Now, R1234YF also comes in the newer uh, automotive vehicles. So now we have this new blend that came out. And, what you know, EPA is trying to say, you know what? What's going to start to happen is we got to go ahead and transition away from 410A because of its higher GWP. And now we're going to go ahead and try to make these other refrigerants and introduce them into the market because of its lower GWP. And what we're trying to hit is 700 or less. So what the GWP that came from this refrigerant is 466, which is very, very good. And then the other refrigerant that was also introduced to the market, right, R32. Now R32 is a single blend with a GWP of 676. Now I do not know because like this refrigerant is not considered a blend. I do not know if it could be charged as a vapor and a liquid just like R22. Later on, I'm pretty sure there's more details into this and we'll go ahead and go more over this and we'll start learning more about these new refrigerants that we now have to work with. But now going back to this, you know, this chart right here and talking about the flammability, why it's considered an A2O refrigerant? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and put you two examples right here. We have 410A and we have R454B. Now, this right here is a 90 degree angle. What happened was that they got 410A, they put some right here and they ended up igniting it until it finally combusted. When it combusted, they made these readings to try to see if it went beyond that first 90 degree mark. Well, because it didn't go past that first initial mark and that combustion was contained right here in the first initial 90 degrees, that right there is still considered an A1 refrigerant. In this case, it has a no flame propagation, meaning that it did not go across, once again, the first lines of my 90 degree angle. Now they grab 454B and they did the same test, ignite it when combusted. What actually happened with R454B is that it actually crossed the first line and it touched the second line. So that second line right there in, in their readings and their understandings, that right there, because it touched the second line, is now considered an A2L refrigerant. So yes, the flammability did go a little bit higher than 410A. Now 410A, once again, no flame propagation. This one has a lower flammability 
and now it moves up the scale to an A2L refrigerant. And now these new changes have to come where we have to go ahead and modify our manifold gauges because of the different pressures, the temperatures, the vacuum pumps, the recovery machines, and all these other tools that we have to go ahead and start investing in to continue to work with these refrigerants. So now when it comes to these refrigerants to try to understand, you know, like which refrigerant is better? Well, in my opinion, I feel like it's just too soon to call. You know, now I don't think there's a race to try to see which refrigerant is better. Now, what is trying to be accomplished here is, you know, the, the efficiency and how well, you know, how, how better we are to maintain the environment. And, and, you know, when I'm talking about the efficiency of the air conditioning system, how better is it going to perform in the air conditioning system and keep the energies lower? You know, so it could go ahead and give me a system that lasts a little bit longer. And like that, it puts a little bit more money in my pocket. All right. So that, that is what we're trying to go ahead and then accomplish here. The new A2O refrigerants. Let's just go ahead and give it some time. Let's start to understand it better. Let's gather more data. And as we gather more data, let's continue to share that data with others. So others can go ahead and improve on working with these new A2O refrigerants. So that right there is just, you know, a basic understanding of why we have a new standard in the market for these new A2O refrigerants, why they're considered A2O refrigerants, and why they're better for us for the environment. So I hope you like this video. If you liked it, make sure to go ahead and leave a thumbs up, subscribe for, so you can go ahead and get notifications for future videos like that. Once again, you can go ahead and continue your HVAC journey. With that being said, I'll go ahead and I'll see you on the next one.